Today, we're taking you on a journey down your body's information superhighway. We're talking about your nerves. Come and have a look at this. Now, where in the body do you think you'd find this lot? Is it A, inside your stomach, B, inside your leg, or C, inside your back? Well, the answer is C, it's inside your back. This is a spinal column, and it runs all the way from the bottom of your head to the top of your bottom. Now, this spinal column is from a pig, but yours is very similar. The whole structure is designed to protect a very important bunch of nerves called the spinal cord, and it runs down this groove in the middle. And this is the spinal cord itself. The reason that it's so well protected inside those bones is because it's very important. It carries all the information from your brain to your muscles. And what's really amazing is some nerves carry signals at 100 metres per second, which is 10 times faster than anyone can run even Usain Bolt. So how are they so fast? Well, we're going to show you. Hang on, that's the lunch bell. Woohoo! <laughs> Just a minute, Sand. It's not lunchtime yet. What's everyone doing in the canteen? Uh, Zand, what on earth is going on? It's actually part of a plan to show you how nerves work. Now, the lunch queue represents one single nerve. All the way along the nerve are iron channels. And that's what the people in this lunch queue are. They pass the message from one place to another all along the length of the nerve. OK, I see. So I represent my own brain, and I'm thirsty and I want a cup of tea, but in order to get my hand to get me a cup of tea, I have to send a message down this line, just like the brain would send a nerve signal down a nerve. So my brain is using the iron channels in my nerve to send a message to my hand for a drink. Mm, tea. OK, uh, milk, two sugars, please. Thank you. Ooh, this tea is very hot. I'd better send a note to Chris's brain, see what he wants me to do about it. Hurry up, Iron Channels. This is really hot. Ah! Tea is too hot. Hmm. Well, Zahn's message did eventually get to me, but it took a long time, didn't it? Well, from my perspective, the tea is too hot to drink, so I'm going to go back to the lab. Come on, Iron Channels. Uh, Chris? Chris? Thankfully, your nerves have a trick up their sleeves to make them work a whole lot better than our lunch queue. And we're going to show you just what that is by using dominoes. Dominoes? Great! Now, each line of dominoes represents a single nerve. And each domino is an iron channel, just like those people in the lunch queue. Now, in this lineup, all the dominoes are side by side. But in this lineup, there are rulers between each domino. And these rulers represent something called a myelin sheath. Now, in your body, there is a myelin sheath wrapped around many of your nerves. This is what allows messages to travel down your nerves in a very special way. Both cars will go round the loop, but which car is going to jump first? Let's find out. It's time for a nerve race. Wearing blue in lane one, it's the rampaging ruler, the myelin sheath mover, Dr Chris! And in lane two, the green machine, the domino dominator, Dr Zahn! Drivers at the ready, three, two, one, go! Yes! Let's see that again. What a start from Dr Chris's myelin sheath as it streaks ahead of Dr Zahn's dawdling dominoes. Exactly what happens inside your body as the myelin sheath wrapped around the nerve allows the signal to go super fast and sends the blue car speeding to the finish. It's just as well, because if your nerves were like Zahn's race, you'd be the slowest moving human on the planet. Oi! So, we've shown you the amazing superhighway of nerves that is your spinal cord. And we've shown you how they pass messages around your body so quickly at 100 metres per second. And that's all thanks to a layer of fat called the myelin sheath, which allows messages to jump along the nerve, getting to their destination super fast. Right, I want to have a rematch. Fine, we can. You have to set up the dominoes. Well, no problem at all. OK, good. Now, this time, I'm going to want the other line-up. I wonder if I can get rid of some of these blue dominoes. Oh! 
present an emergency, Harry is waiting on the scan results of his neck. Let's catch up with him and see if it's good news. Back in Liverpool, 14-year-old Harry is in hospital following a nasty knock to the head during a rugby match. With ten minutes on the clock, Harry wanted to score the winning try, but the opposition had the ball, so he went in for a tackle. Instead of winning the ball, he was knocked for six and ended up in A&E. Dr Anne sent him for a CT scan to spot any broken bones. So, what are the results, Doc? Good news, you've got a brain. They found that in there. Phew! And the bones in your neck also look OK. Double phew. But the tests don't stop there. Next to tackle Harry is Dr Matt Storrell. He wants to make sure that his bones move properly without the neck brace. I'm going to ask you to do some very gentle, controlled movements for me, and then we'll take some x-rays. Come down forward with your neck. Is that all right for you? So far, so good. OK, then we'll get this started. Time for your close-up, Harry. Strike a pose. The doctor is looking for any abnormalities in the bones. That looks absolutely fine. And faster than you can say bad tackle, there's good news for Harry. So we can let you go home tonight. But when can our rugby superstar take to the pitch again? I'd leave it for about six weeks, I would. I don't think that's Harry's happy face, but at least he's heading home. Bye, Harry.